Hey, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl Cran Cake Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. Is that just not the story of our lives? Let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small G for God. So they're not very reverential. They're sometimes the wrong word altogether. Or they're misspelled. Or I don't know, whatever. They're just not hundreds. Um that I would correct it if at all I had an incentive to. But I don't because nobody currently watches my long form content and that's alright because that's just life, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Next up, uh, I have got very potentially application makeup that I am wearing. Uh, yeah, it tends to bounce off and on my face, you will know. Sorry, I'm distracted by something going on in the background, you will know. Um, yeah, I'm wearing app makeup, you will know. What did I want to say? If I'm wearing it or not, etc. I am very distracted. And then next thing, I have a segment, a component. Um, yeah, I'm only, it's basically an empathy segment. I'm only human after all, I'm only human after all, I'm only human after all. Don't take a jab at me. This is your planet, we get it. But like, not for much longer. Anyway, I'm trying to bring forth a blush to display that when you prick me, I bleed. When you punch me, I get punchable. I'm human, I've got like blood in my bones. In my veins, sorry, anyway, there it is. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, cool. It is done. Already, let's just get straight into it. Uh, shoo, yo. There's, there's a lot going on, y'all. Um, hmm. There's just, there's a lot going on. Uh, anyway, whatever. It's the last days. It is what it is. Y'all, um, shoo. Okay, so I have got this horrific headache right now. Uh, and it is as a result of a failed... A failing. It's failing. That's what, like, yeah. This is the kind of stuff that kills people, guys, um, that don't know Jesus. With us, however, especially if we're super prayerful, we just get physical manifestation of what it is that death spells are trying to do. So we get headaches, body gets heavy, all that jazz, and I've got, like, a headache. And I haven't taken anything for it. I'm probably going to take something for it after this video, because I've been trying to delay taking something for it as long as possible so I don't just spend all day swallowing grandpa uh yeah closer to sleeping so that I can take it just before I sleep so as to make my sleep not so terrible uh yeah but like that's just what's uh what's happening whoa and like oh goodness gracious goodness gracious like shoo yes you guys people in the occult like I, I don't even like I, um I talk about this filthy kingdom every single day and um I guess it doesn't really get old because it must be communicated. It has to be spoken. But shoo, like who the heck lives like that? Like you know, the people who have done this to me on us uh, were regular people. They were like normal people, normal men and normal women. Yeah, <laughs> just regular people, and they have darkened their lives like this. This this. <laughs> When, when, when this is what, like, when, when this is how it is that people around you live because of you, how in the world do you even think that is sustainable? I was just thinking about, before I came here, I have this beastly cousin, right? A guy that's very severely involved in the occult and he's got two daughters. <laughs> the amount of rape that is charging me like a bull, <laughs> charging like a red cloth or whatever, is so excruciating, it's so exquisite. <laughs> My thing is, what man has daughters and is involved in the occult I just <laughs> what man in his right mind is a satanist a devil worshiper and has daughters like when when he when they endure women through this like when they put women through this level of of like oppression <laughs> y'all <laughs> my ex-boyfriend has a daughter last i checked it was one he might have had more since then I have a beastly little menacing rapey cousin that has two daughters. I have a, another, like a, my former, like some dude that used to be the friend of my ex, again, daughter. Um, a lot of them just have girl children. They've got, they've got girls. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what happened to, <coughs> ooh, the headache. Yes, yeah, like it, y'all. Yes, yeah, like it. It's heavy. It's hard knock, right? But anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna ride through it. You know the story of, of Uinene? Mrechana, Mrechana, I don't know how to pronounce her surname properly. That 19 year old gorgeous girl that got lured into a laundromat and raped and then killed. Yeah, Uinen did not call the rape on herself. Not No one, no woman calls any rape on herself. But a lot of the cases of gender-based violence in the country 
uh, from women who are in relationships with disturbing dudes like guys who whose character left a lot to be desired guys who were obviously whack okay um like the signs were there they were glaring that you know what are you doing in this situation don't be with this guy you're gonna get hurt the the signs were all there they were just gawking staring longingly and uncomfortably into the eyes of the woman who died and everybody around her so when she finally dies at his hands died at his hands it's like it was it was of course a shock and people are bereaved and it's tragic but there's literally like 80 percent of people in this chick's life that could have seen that coming like they could have totally seen it coming like they can put the pieces of the puzzle together and be like i can see how this woman ended up dead at the hands of that guy even if he had apparently never laid a hand on her before just you know a passive aggression a control uh a, a way about themselves like the way that you know there was just a hostility dwelling inside the dude like signs signs man signs that were there a lot of the women who have died at the hands of these gender-based violence animals they could have gotten out earlier but they didn't the signs were there the warnings were there they were glaring the red flags were stark they were yawning and they just stayed okay and then they ended up dead but we uh was different the story was was different the case was different it was just some salivating strange beast some licentious sexually aroused 24 hours a day menace that likely watched pornography all day and night just paging through it unable to exercise any self-control over his loins and was unlikely able to get a woman the right way and having the job that he had he had he was i guess at, he was per perpetually frequented in the in front of the eyes of by various people who came in and out of that laundromat and including women and one day he just decided that i'm sick and tired of lusting after all these gorgeous women and doing nothing about it and so he like it was with Ian it was premeditated the murder the the rape was premeditated like he told her to come later to fetch her package and later she did come when the laundromat was closed and he made was it a laundromat i think it was a laundromat or something and like he probably he grabbed her raped her and then killed her he grabbed her raped her and then killed her afterwards like yeah the chick did not see it coming she was not in a relationship with some random she was not dating a dude whose red flags were just layering and at her death everybody was like but why didn't she leave sooner she could not have seen that murder coming and ladies and gentlemen south africa is teeming at the folds with these laundromat murderers <laughs> in the occult and they are dads of girls <laughs> i don't know what is going on in this land i i just i don't understand it this country is copiously infested with laundromat killers of hot chicks that walk in there expecting a service and get themselves entered into eternity all of a sudden somebody's dead could not have seen it coming you cannot as a woman lock yourself up in a hut a room a hole and never go out anywhere in society all in the interest of averting the potential for getting raped by a laundromat killer and then killed you can't my life is unique and frankly the unique nature of my life is a blessing because i am not of my own volition locked up in a room unable to get out to the laundromat to go and grab iwashing i am locked in this strange ugly ominous satanic situation by a wickedness that has insisted a woman has no life she goes nowhere and does nothing with herself until she either capitulates to satan or lets a laundromat killer pick her up i am in this position and so therefore i am somewhat protected from the heinous activity roaming up and down hopping on the spot like a kangaroo in all of this country of ours i have got a severity of post-traumatic stress but frankly this here ptsd is salvaging and saving of my person because i am super wary now of men and never mind that but for the life of me i do not know who is safe like what is going there is so much demonic charging going on in the streets the people are just so irrational they're so mentally ill i mean this splitting headache that i have right now is from my refusal to embrace a laundromat killer it's for my refusal to walk into a laundromat after hours and trust some dude to help me along 
like it is me being super on guard it, it is the fact that i am not as impressionable as i was 10 years ago before i was entered into the situation i'm not easily lured into little corners anymore like i used to be I, it, it has nothing to do with age being easily lured into a corner sometimes it's just a trust of men in society or a belief that something could never possibly happen in a particular environment you know just essentially just trusting that no not today not not him there are women who are in their 30s 40s that are still impressionable it's not about age it is about the fact that we're living in a demon possessed society full of satanic beastly men that you could never suspect would ever rape but they do Back in the day, I don't know how many times I teased guys before I came to Christ, making out and all that jazz. And just before having sex, I'd be like, no, I don't want to do it. And the dude would, would, would get off me. He would not insist on finishing what he started. But I had put myself in a position for him to be like Wangdella. No way. I'm going to finish what I started. I, I get, I, I cringe at the thought of that time, of how it is that I have gotten so many guys to the, to the precipice of sex. And then just before I'd be like, no, I'm not doing it. And I never got raped, not even once. That was some strange little different time that is long gone now. It's long gone because the very kinds of men, the very dudes that would get off if I said, I'm not finishing this. Now today are just taking what they want. <laughs> hey guys, because they know witchcraft. And sadly, women, you support them. You know what women are like? You know what they're like? Women are like, you know, like in, in, in gangster fueled Gassi's ghettos, like Mami Lodi, when a gangster gets killed by the cops, when a gangster gets killed by the cops, by the popo, by the police, in some kind of a shootout, how it is that their funerals are so jam-packed, and there's all these kids in the streets out here talking about how the police ain't jack, how dare you kill our star, you killed a young man that still has such a, a long life ahead of him, he was an excellent soul and the police just took him from us forget la bojada forget about these popo they suck they, they killed our, our main man because this gangster in the gassi used to give people a whole bunch of money he was like pablo escobar he terrorized only the suburbs the su suburbia he terrorized only santon but he left mamilodians alone and that was his service to the community he would never rob his own community so he goes and robs some white people somewhere else and in in their mansions and what have you in santon where they're staying he goes to he goes to benmore rather than rob in alex he goes to menlin rather than rob in mami lodi or in, in soshanguve that that that's this dude right that's what's good so for those reasons he's all loved by the community and when he gets killed people all over that gassy are all mournful and they're talking about how the police ain't jack but this little terrorist has killed some people in suburbia some of whom were from mami lodi but they moved to the burbs so community men too mm. this little random terrorist has increased the crime statistics of south africa this little terrorist has made lives of people a living nightmare he has robbed uh, children of, of parents this little terrorist is frankly good riddance but in his gassi in his ghetto where he's from where he is from people are out here mourning his death they are out here crying over his death they are out here speaking about how the police ain't jack because they killed a good man no he was a menace a terrorist the gangrene and the scum of south africa that which is making our, our, our nation impossible to live in he had to go if he was not to be put in prison because he just kept on eluding or evading the cops, then it's good that he caught a bullet straight to his head. However, there are people that celebrate him, saying our gangster ought not have died to a point of his celebrity being more jam-packed than a Beyonce concert. Women are like that. They are like that to these terroristic men, these occult men, Batwele, these occult men that keep on sleeping with these slay queens, these little laundromat rapists. Yeah, women. When these men get called out, neutralized, I'm like the popo at this point. I am the police, right? I'm out here gunning down some freak. That's what's good. Because the freak had to go. Frankly, if the, if the freak had surrendered, he would have gone to prison. That, that's all. He would have lived. The rest of these days, maybe even turned around, you know, turned a leaf in prison, gave his life to Christ. He could have actually lived. It's not like I was out here running around just shooting the dude with him being unarmed. It was a shootout 
and I got to live while he got brought low. Yeah, that's what's good. This bugger wouldn't have died if he had just surrendered, if he did not insist on getting into a shootout with the police. He would have lived to serve time in jail, but nonetheless he would have breathed. Instead, he gets taken to eternity. But because, unlike Ikenza, Lasse Mami Lodi, unlike the gangster in Mami Lodi, or the gangster in Zola Soweto, or the gangster in Alex, yeah, mm, this time around, it's some CEO of a company. This time around, it's your big brother. This time around, it's some dude that is kind of respected. He's, the, he's a dad of three and a husband. This time around, it's some feverishly wicked animal that nonetheless is respected in the community. He is the mayor of the city, but he is a rapist and a murderer. But you see, he doesn't rape and murder in his own community. He doesn't rape and murder the daughters of his own sisters. He doesn't rape and murder people in his backyard. He goes to Santon. This little feverish animal, this beast, this pestilent psychopath goes to Benmore. Okay. He goes to Four Ways. He insists that he goes to Menlin. He is, he goes to Centurion. He does not rob in Soshanguva. He won't, no. So you Soshanguvites respect him, but he has robbed a woman that lives in Hatfield, Pretoria of her husband and a daughter in a shootout. That, that's what these occult practitioners are. They are gangsters and terrorists. Do you understand? And they murder people outside of their sphere of influence and they take what they want. But when it comes to their own children, mm, their own daughters, don't you dare touch my kid. For real, these men got daughters, yo. They are laundromat rapists. They've got little girls that are just starting primary school or they're just entering high school. Some of them are about to enter varsity first year and they would kill anyone that would dare convert out their own children into uinen. Kotobon, how many uenenes they've got in these streets just thrown like cadavers. I got a cousin that's got two young daughters, primary school age, and he is a rapist, a spiritual rapist. He does to women what it is that's been done to me mm, for a living, a lifestyle. He's one of the terrorists of South Africa, of Johannesburg. He's one of them. There's one in my family. I have exes that are like that. And women are like the community of some dead gangster that had to go, that have no regard for his victims. No respect for his victims. Like that, that, like his kasi men have no respect for Indabayuti. This person is good riddance for the citizens of Santon. They could not sleep at night because of this like buffoon. This beastly psychopath had to go because he was making the life of people in that particular community a living nightmare. And now that he's dead, they can at least sleep at night. There's closure for the families that have been robbed of daughters. There's justice, some semblance of salve on your open wounds, even though he's taken your daughter away at least justice has been served. These men are well respected, well regarded in society. They just they run. They literally crash into men and women's homes, into the bedrooms of their daughters and they just snatch them like a snatch and grab, like a snatch and grab, like a smash and grab on the side of the road. Somebody out here smashing your window, grabbing your purse and running away. But instead of a purse, it's your whole child. A person you invested years in raising, took them to school, had them invested in university funds that you're not even going to be able to uh, deplete the policy of because before because your daughter died before she could finish varsity or a daughter that you invested your hard earned money in that graduated and everybody was proud and there was a graduation party and then somewhere along the way she gets killed in a parking lot going home after doing her residency at Paraguanath Hospital since she's a doctor. All that money that you spend, like all that effort and just, but you just lost your child because some psychopath decided I'm going to take her. When it's, when, when, when it's the laundromat killer of, of Uinene, you think, well, what a freak, what a beast. But you see, it doesn't come in that blue collar state only. It doesn't only come in that blue collar state where it's just some salivating pornography minded freak that takes a 19 year old girl, rapes her and then kills her. It sometimes comes in respectable men, like I said, mayors, entire municipal councillors, men that are CEOs, general managers, senior managers and companies. They would imagine I'm not so blue collar as to go and snatch some 19 year old off the street and rape her and then kill her. No, but you are out here bewitching your new intern into oblivion until she can't breathe. Then you have her body. But if she says no, because that's the thing about men in the occult, right? That's the thing about men in the occult. They have a pomp, a, bra a bravado, like they are, um, they're ego centric and megalomaniacal. So when women reject them, in spite of how much witchcraft they have invested, they deteriorate to murder. 
They decide that I'm gonna crash and burn your entire life because I don't save it. Now you don't know who I am. They literally respond to women like you don't know who I am. Nobody says no to me. And then they destroy an entire future. Sometimes even going to the extreme of killing that woman because who rejects me? Who? I am dying right now at the hands of men like these. And when the Lord knocks them out like a domino because they gotta go. Guess who's going to be out here mourning at their deaths and out here bashing their fist at the kingdom of heaven, bashing their fist at God Almighty, bashing their fists at his saints. In other words, bashing their fists at the popo. Guess who is going to be reviling the police, spitting at police stations, trying to Molotov cocktail them for killing a gangster. It's going to be the community of people where they come, women, with this being an incendiary agenda against you and you and you everywhere where you are at, panning your left, your head left and right. With this being an incendiary agenda of that nature, even against you, you nonetheless are going to stand with the terrorist that would have broken and entered into your house, killing you, raping your daughter, and leaving your husband in a coma. If you had just moved from Alex to Santon, all you had to do was move in order for him to come to you, in order for him to rob you. So you just so happen to not be in harm's way because Osen Zanula in his community. But the moment you move out, the moment you move out, he's out here pouncing on you like a beast. Yeah. But you're at his funeral, talking about how the pa the popo ain't jack. Talking about how the police ain't jack. Yeah. Aja talking about how God ain't jack. Christianity ain't jack. We're so disrespectful. We we have no... We, 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 uh, we keep on accusing people of nonsense. These people are honest men. They are hardworking. And this woman is Aja accusing them of crimes they didn't commit. <laughs> yeah. When your deadbeat boyfriends and your deadbeat husbands and your deadbeat baby daddies, when your deadbeat bosses... Your deadbeat male colleagues pass away. You be out here lamenting against. But what kind of a God kills a man at just 32? He was so young. What kind of a God takes a, a family man away from his daughter and his wife? He still has so much to do. He was supposed to uh, uh, walk his daughter down the aisle in four weeks. She was getting married. It was a venue, a destination wedding. And, and God just knocked him out. What kind of a God does that? Yeah, but like he was a rapist and a murderer that had to die. But... People be Ajab on some. What kind of a God? The people that have done this to me, the men that are subjugating me to the tyranny of all of this harassment are regular dudes, Lankudra. Men that I used to once upon a time hang with, talk with, respect, revere, regard, call sir. Yeah. And they are uh, they are laundromat killers, guys. We nene did not ask to have what was done to her done to her. Not that all the other women did, but she did not leave herself in a compromised position with a wicked man. She did not ignore red flags in a relationship like i said earlier <clears throat> she was just going to go and collect a parcel and she ended up in eternity she went to go and collect a, per a parcel she but she ended up in eternity but not first before getting raped because i'm salivating dude that felt like it's mine i'm gonna take it just went and took it and like i said it was premeditated what what happened to e winana was premeditated this dude told her to come later so he could rape her i don't think the murder was premeditated but i do believe the rape was it's like after raping her, I, I believe he probably went into a mode of, I, what am I going to do with her now that I've had her body by force? So he probably killed her just as a last minute resort, whereas the rape was certainly premeditated. So it's men who are trying to lure women into their space, have their bodies following which they will kill them unexpectedly or kill them having not planned to go out like that. And these are your husbands. They are your dads your brothers, your male cousins, your male colleagues, people you respect, they are the gangsters in your community terrorizing some other neighborhood. You don't feel the pinch of what they're doing, but Karabo is an uinene right now, in the making. I am thoroughly being salivated after by some pornographic minded men, men, plural, who are premeditating my rape. I don't know how many times I have told you guys that Korobela is rape. Angandaba, who says what? It's roofies. It's like roofying a drink and getting a woman incapacitated then having her body while her senses are inebriated with a toxin while she's under the influence of something while she's gone dead, knocked out. And then she wakes up in the morning only to feel that she has been had, but with no recollection of the event. Corbella is exactly like that. It is exactly like that. You literally find yourself having slipped onto a man's nether regions and you don't know how you let yourself sleep with a dude that initially you didn't even like how did you get yourself to a point where you were privately alone together you didn't even like him and after you have sex with him you are asking yourself how did i get there how did i get there how did i let myself get so overwhelmed with passions that i would let this dude have me i didn't want him it's roofies 
It appears consensual, however, unfortunately, unlike date rape drugs, where it is that a rape kit can be done and confirm that sex was had with you. Where it is that they can find traces of that drug in your blood if you take the rape kit quickly. It can be it's a GHB or whatever. Traces of, of roofies can be found in your bloodstream if you go to the doctors quickly before it exits your system. So there are ways to prove that you were roofied with physical roofies. With physical roofies, you can prove it. But with Gorobella, what the heck? Like, you will never know proper. There's no recourse, okay? There is no recourse for women that have been raped by Gorobella men. There's no recourse. There is no recourse. And, you know, it's not just men. Women do it too. But I'm speaking right now at my to my own particular affliction. I keep on getting harassed by these roofing men menaces. And the sad thing is, despite how much I talk about it, I'm in Andab. I, I think in almost every video I do, I mention... My, my, my abhorrence of never mind the occult, but Corbella men, like roofing men, it's in almost every video of mine. So there's no way that these menaces did not catch wind of what I am about, what I talk about. In spite of knowledge of my spiritual gifting, it is all very irrelevant. In spite of my abhorrence of it, they keep experimenting. And when then their witchcraft does not work, that's when they graduate to murder. That's when now I gotta die. That's when I get harassed by exquisite headaches, excruciating headaches that feel like my head has been sliced off my, 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 my neck because a dead spell is an operation that I'm just not dying from because I am covered by the body, by the, by, by the Holy Spirit of the living God. I'm a member of the body of Christ. I'm covered by the Lord. I've got the Holy Spirit. I don't just plunge into eternity because some silly little occult practitioner did a spell. I don't, I don't die. There are people who die mysterious illnesses because of occult magic. If you remember a celebrity in this country that died on a mysterious death, Precious Simelan. People who suddenly, they were okay yesterday and then they get, they get a strange sickness. They don't know what's wrong with them. Doctors can't diagnose them. And then next thing they're dead. Sometimes it's explainable illnesses like heart attacks, you know, complications with diabetes, a stroke. But other times it's just some anomalous illness that frankly blood gets drawn all different kinds of things get done and nobody finds anything wrong with this person and then next thing they have coded next thing they have died and that's how precious passed away precious Simelani died like that one day you get like a menacing headache and then next thing you're dead and it's somebody in the occult that did it those are your lives those are your lives occult men and women they, those are your that's how you live what the heck like that's how you live you, you live creating that level of nightmarish horror movie outcomes for people's lives. You go and you cast a spell on a person. Next thing Umundu is sick, they are vomiting and nobody can diagnose what's wrong with them. And then they've died. And you know you did that and then you go to work the next Monday. What the heck? You, you have lunch with your girls. You, you play soccer with the boys for real. Like, who, who lives like that? Like who? Who in the world lives like that? Why do you think this is a normal life? Why do you think this is sustainable? And again, why do you think there is no God? Why do you think there is nobody balancing all that activity? South Africa is teeming at the falls with people like this, guys. Nobody is safe. Nobody is safe. So my situation, frankly, it is hard. I'm in a, a bad knot, okay? I am in a strange circumstance. It hurts. But there's literally no one more protected than me. Precisely because of my situation. Precisely because I go nowhere, do nothing. Precisely because I am locked behind these walls proverbially anyway precisely because i don't have a life i don't have friends i don't go anywhere in public precisely because i don't because look at what it is that people are insisting on doing to me just from seeing my videos on youtube like i even stopped uploading on facebook so i'm on one platform and one platform only youtube just based on the consumption of my content on youtube i am being roofied like no man's business and labandu are taking a chance with someone separated from them by if firewall your internet by internet by by ones and zeros binary code by technology by telecommunications poles this person is separated these people are separated from me by technology i am behind a television screen they've got fans on me like they've got a uh, thingy uh, feelings and fevers of fall over me the way that you would have a fever or feelings for a celebrity that, that you can never really touch, but for some strange reason, they feel like I am feasible, I'm grabbable, I'm haveable. Like, oh wait, no, yes, guys. Bayasanya, like when I was a kid, I used to love Drew Hill. When I was in primary school, I was, I was obsessed, I was mad obsessed with Drew Hill, and in particular, Nokio. I, I used to, yo, that dude, what? I was spazzing like hard knock. I would go crazy whenever a music video by Drew Hill would come on. And uh, Nokio in particular, 
I had like I, I used to buy these um I forgot what the name of that magazine was but these magazines that uh, that have celebrities in them like boy bands and everybody that you could listen to uh centerfolds of whoever might be on there my sister and I used to buy those magazines every month when they would publish them and I would tear out the 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 posters of Drew Hill wherever they were at right and with like prestic put them on my walls they were all over my walls in my bedroom and Nokia in particular was like a center like he was just everywhere uh on one of the posters that I put up I even put a kiss with like lipstick on on his face I put a um a little heart that that uh came from a package like you know when you buy sweets at a store like uh, flowers not, not flowers but yeah that too but when you buy chocolates and whatnot and it comes with little uh paper hearts or with little uh, styrofoam hearts yeah there was a styrofoam heart of that nature that came from some package from a sweet store i took that off the packaging and i put it with prestig on top of nokio's face it was just dangling over just his face in that four member group called drew hill over nokio's face is it nokio or nokia nokia's the the phone right nokio yeah I, this little heart was dangling over there lots and lots of posters of him all over my room drew hill as a conglomerate but especially nokio had a massive crush on that dude right at the time i was um he was he was four years older than me i remember he was 19 so and they were 18 so i was like four now nah, they were like they, they were teenagers yeah um i was in primary school when i had a massive crush on drew hill and also like the beginning maybe of high school right so i could have been like 13 and they were like 17 18 or whatnot yeah because of the fact that the guy was 19 years old 18 basically still a teenager i thoroughly had a mental illness in me where i thought that i could totally go to america and marry nokio <laughs> I, I i thoroughly thought that one day i was gonna save money and i was gonna go to america and i was gonna show nokio myself and he was gonna love me and we were gonna be together forever that's the kind of mental illness that dwells in extreme fans of celebrities do you understand what i'm saying like you will never ever get any kind of attention from the celeb in question but you as a f a crazy fan you as a crazy fan will go out of your way to even think that you can even visit where he stays and then he would see you and it was so silly that even one of my friends was like you should go to america maybe he'll like you what in the world what in the world i was 13 i was 13 years old as i got older having crushes on celebrities the myriads of them that would out you in these streets pop out uh i never i i i snapped out of it i was 13 when when i was older in high school this time around i had a big fat chunky crush on a dude that was now closer to home the uh, gimang fat joe the guy with the big lips yeah i had a, a massive crush on fat joe with the fat joe show and i used to also severely spaz over fat joe i used to tune in to, i remember it was on thursdays at 9 p.m his show i never missed it uh all that jazz type thing but i never even because i was grown up now i was i was slightly more mature i was less impressionable i was now 16 17 years old my my big fat crush on fat joe me thinking whoa this dude is so fly yeah never made me think i'm going to locate fat joe seeing as he is in south africa and i'm gonna marry him no i recognized that it was a a, a schoolgirl crush on a celebrity and he was there far away and i could never touch him i could never touch him it just ended at a crush and that's where it was ultimately the crush would then flee and fade but every so often there are crazy people that would stalk fat joe there are crazy people that would harass him in public there are crazy people that would throw their underwear at him or like lurk outside of his house where she found the address from what source don't nobody know and then put themselves in a position to give a great deal of disquiet and life disturbance to fat joe making his life a living nightmare because obviously i'm not going to date the 17 year old girl obviously I'm not going to date this 25 even if it was a 25 year old woman an age appropriate woman bottom line is she's a fan and she's crazy i'm not ever going to be with that woman but you see that woman doesn't get that the woman does not get that and so she makes his life a living nightmare causes him to crease his forehead get multiple restraining orders and it's just for the life of him now his the quality of his life is now just completely trashed because there is somebody who seriously believes that he that she can be with him when it is utterly impossible 
possible for that to happen. Thankfully, most fans that have big, fat, chunky crushes on celebrities recognize that they could never be with them. When you have a crush on Beyonce as a dude, you know that it's you're not, you're never, you're like proper. You're just buzzing over her and then you move on. You're going to get your own girlfriend. That's what's good. You, you don't get heartbroken when she gets married to Jay-Z. You just know that, you know, she was, I, she was so fly. Okay, okay, she's bae, whatever. Yeah, most people are realistic, most. But every so often there is the creepy weirdo that Aja is going to be mourning when Beyonce gets married. Properly Aja cutting themselves, committing suicide, like stalking. Eh, hey, guys, yes, and like in Whitney Houston, the movie The Bodyguard. Yeah, a, 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 a fan on that tip. Following you around. Following you around because they saw you on TV. They saw you on YouTube and decided that you were close enough to them right around the corner here in Johannesburg for them to then feasibly, feasibly think that they can be Fat Joe's girlfriend. Even though you saw him on TV and you had a big fat chunky crush on him from there. Uh, uh, most people are rational. But you see, occult magic creates a mental illness, a psychosis in people that makes them think that they can get celebrities. And I'm not out here calling myself a celebrity, but what I am is a person separated from these buffoons by firewalls, by ones and zeros, by telecommunications lines, by technology. I am some chick from online. I am some chick whose content you found on YouTube. Unfortunately for them, I'm in freaking Johannesburg, they know that. And also, unfortunately for them, my life sucks, I'm struggling. And so for those reasons, they thoroughly think that their little Nokia crush as a 13-year-old girl, their little Drew Hill member crush, and their little Fat Joe crush, they can realize it. Like you are just spazzing over Fat Joe as he is doing the Fat Joe show, thinking that he's so cute, and then you thoroughly think that it is possible that you can date Fat Joe. If I had thought that I could date Fat Joe, my friends would have thought I was crazy because by then I was in high school. My whole family would have thought I was crazy. The country would have thought I was crazy. I would have likely been thrown in a psychiatric hospital if I tried to contact Fat Joe. I understood my boundaries for having a crush on a distant celeb. And just because he was, like I said, in Johannesburg, did not make my reality of my uh, how entirely impossible it is to be with him absent. YouTube is uh, YouTube and social media at large is a very unfortunate space because a lot of the people who put themselves there are just regular Janes and regular Joes that end up gaining somewhat celebrity status or they gain, what do you call this? Um, inf the influencer, they call them influencer, they, they, they gain influencer status in the eyes of however many people would watch them. And so little mini celebrities are created out of them, out of those YouTubers. But it's regular Janes and regular Joes, it's regular people, some of them are high school students, they are just regular people that decide that they're going to put their video up online. And if this regular person that has recorded a video and started a Gmail account and created a YouTube channel and then uploaded a video in their studio just by uploading this content. Now every so often you can, it is possible if there is anything seemly about you for someone to have a crush on you, for someone to like you, for someone to think, oh, this chick is pretty, oh, this dude is handsome. Oh, this person wants cars. Yeah, because now they've put themselves out there for you to see them. But my goodness, the very same way that you would, for the first time in your life, see a music video, yeah, Brandy or Monica and think that she's cute. You should recognize that it's a celebrity that's in the music industry. She is singing, she's pretty, but she's n not ever gonna be mine. You like, people just like, Papa, if you could be realistic when Brandy first came on the scene, when Monica first came on the scene, if you could be super realistic then with what in the world you're dealing with here, why are you not realistic with content creators online? Because literally you are making our lives a living freaking nightmare. That's all, that, that's exactly what they are. They are separated from you by multiple degrees of separation, by firewalls, like I said, telecommunications lines, sometimes even entire countries. The dude in America is all the way there, a person that far away. When you have a crush on them, recognize them, therefore, as you're a fan and she's a celebrity. Leave it at, oh my goodness, Beyonce is so fly, and they just move on. Because it's it, it literally not even, it's highly unlikely that Beyonce is going to one day consider responding to your direct message. It's unlikely that she's going to consider ending up with you, snuggling with you in a park, walking hand in hand with you, and you get to say, ooh, I'm dating Beyonce. The, the level of lack of realism in the minds of these occult men, I just, I don't get it. To slap a woman because you have a crush on her. Yeah, okay. Fat Joe Nankaza. Like, Nokio. Nokio used to char. Like, I found him charming. He was cute. He was good looking. For crying out loud. But like, as a 13, 12 year old girl, 12, 13. Yeah, okay. Maybe I, I can be excused for being so dumb. 
but once i got to a certain age it was inexcusable and i'm dealing right now with grown men grown men that thoroughly think that mina bang toleas like it can you imagine the danger that beyonce for instance would be in if she decided to date a fan can you imagine just the myriad of outcomes that could possibly happen to her she will find herself dead from some super possessive little boy who she humored but now that she wants to go and paint the town red as who she is he's like no uh, uh, nah. next thing some other dude takes you from me next thing she finds herself chopped up into like 20 pieces killed by some rando that was like i dated beyonce i went on a date with beyonce for one day and here it is that she's, she's not taking my calls I, I, she's not taking my calls i'm sorry uh, uh then i mean proper danger when you humor freaking fans you will die because they will feel possessive over you they will feel possessive over you they will feel like basically their fanaticism the thing that made them spaz over you putting little hard trinkets on top of their posters on a wall that somebody else is doing it and so you are more so a potential victim for murder at the hands of such men as these just because it's regular janes and joes uploading their content on youtube does not make it any less inappropriate to expect to fraternize with them it does not make it any less inappropriate it, it literally does not make it any less inappropriate these people don't come online to be harassed but unfortunately when you open yourself up by putting your content online like that you then amass for yourself a, a whole bunch of random stalkers and in this 21st century and in this south africa and this africa of ours it then is also mapped or coupled you know brought together with witchcraft witchcraft that's going to cause a woman to have splitting headaches from here to timbuktu unsure when under heaven she's going to come up from harasses her harassment that is slapping her silly from men that are frankly dumb and irresponsible to think i can somehow one day end up any of their wives they think that way they, they still man man yes in i i i get i don't i get maybe i do you all need to understand that my little crush on nokio was irresponsible and my thoughts were rightly placed in the body of just a child and so therefore should they graduate or migrate over into the mind of a man that on that day we're dealing with an exquisite psychosis a deep and a malevolent one at that that is going to get a woman laundromat killed by some freak that's always watching porn that made a decision that he's going to go and take some woman's daughter and throw her into eternity i might not be loved not adequate adequately or appropriately by, by my family but i am the daughter of god and he sees how it is that some freaks are trying to make out of me a woman that is going to be lured into a space thinking she's collecting laundry and then find herself suddenly in eternity i'm not going to get killed by you guys you must understand that i am not dying at the hands of a stranger it's not happening but these men are all over social media they are sliding into women's dms on the daily that they as in guys you all are not safe you guys are not safe men that that will feel so angry at your rejection of them that they will decide that your mom and dad must now go and be the ones rather to bury their child they will be so mad at you for rejecting them in a dm for like if you humor them even once if you respond to a dad that's why i don't respond to dms anymore if you respond to a direct message even once they will feel entitled to you and when you reject them when you don't want to go on a date when you don't want to talk to them mofonu some animal from this country some little beastly gen z I, I keep speaking about him oh i i responded to his dm we then ended up chatting in my email and then he was like maybe this is the maybe next time we're gonna talk we, 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 we got my phone. i was like hey i'm not about to go and talk with you on the phone i don't know you the only reason i moved you over from my dm space to my email is because i barely ever respond to my dms because i i i, I don't check them that much but my email it always pops in my face i check it every day so if you still have if you want to write me if you want to say something if you want to, to you give my point like edification as a sister in christ i thought he was in christ yo then you can write me there ah he imagined the then on that day i guess maybe even my 081 78 etc my cell phone number is two seconds away from being given next thing i'm out here facetiming some stranger i met on the internet what in the world no and it was at the point when i told him that i didn't know dude we're not gonna be speaking <laughs> over the phone forget it i don't want to hear your voice like what the heck i'm busy i'll respond to your emails at my leisure at my time but i'm not about to literally schedule a phone call like i'm busy i'm busy like i don't have time to be chatting with some dude nje, that i found that they found me on batong and it was at that stage when i told him that like take a breather relax no i'm not going to be chatting with you on the phone 
that's when he slept me with Corbel. That's when he was like, I'll help you along then. Okay, Joe, you yes, like it, guys. You know, at the kingdom of heaven, we have to fellowship with one another. We gotta be kind. Conviviality is important. So you don't just ignore some people. But yeah, in this 21st century, I know you are here basically talking to a person that you have no idea is spazzing over you the way that I was spazzing over Nokia from Drew Hill. And so when you tell him, no, we're not going to be talking Kofunung, <laughs> dream on, like, what are you doing? Uh -uh, now you're a fan. Like, uh, imagine, like, Fat Joe responding to my fan mail, writing him fan mail, and he responds. And then I start to think that this can fruition into a relationship. I start to get all excited. Oh, he responded to my fan mail. I got it in the post. He responded to my fan mail. Hebatum, what in the world? And then I start to feel irritated when he doesn't respond again. After the first response to my fan mail. I then insist that he gives me his number that we can talk on the line. Hey, Batum, oopies, he's fat Joe. He's busy. He responded to his fan mail out of courtesy, out of being who he is and appreciating your love for his craft. But beyond that, like, yo, chill. Like, proper chill. And when then that fan starts to feel some kind of way, because fat Joe decided that, okay, after the first response to your fan mail, dude, we're done here. I, I apologize. Then you, you, you start to feel like fat Joe can die. You then start to feel like, you are going to knock out every last woman that Fat Joe dates. Like, proper. You start to so severely stalk him that you start to plot murder against all the women that he is interested in. When you start to hear that he's got a crush on this woman in the entertainment industry, you then go and you do a death spell on her. That's what some of these beasts have done. Proper. Don't know me from a bar of soap, but they've already committed occult rituals against my future husband. Hey, Batung, I told you guys the other day about a dream that I had with Ellen Parr being dead. Ellen Parr is a Christian minister whose story is very encouraging to me because he got married at the age of 40, having waited all that time, and he only found his wife later on. And he therefore is a symbol to me. He's symbolic of the fact that there are still men who are single, who are age appropriate, that are waiting on God for wives. So when I saw Alan Parr being dead in my dream, it was a symbol of Alan Parr that was dead in my dream. He was, been, he was murdered. I already spoke about that. Murdered in my dream by people who are killing the prospect of me meeting a man that is age appropriate that has been waiting on God for a wife in all these years and has not muddied his statistics. He has not ever been married. He's never, he's not, he hasn't um, had children. Basically just messed with his, his himself, squandered himself in these streets. And by, by the time he gets to 40, he's just like baby daddy with two different baby mamas and two ex-wives and whatnot. Like a dude with a clean slate at 40. Alan Paul was that. So like I said, he's a symbol. That is something that gives me hope that such such things such men do exist and i had a dream of ellen Parr being dead yes guys doesn't yeah no yeah it's these menaces some some fan of nokio making a decision to kill the girlfriend that he hears that that that, that she hears in the in the rumor mill that he's dating this particular chick and then garabo decides to go and fetch a spell somewhere in some corner of johannesburg to kill the woman that nokio is with but you don't know me and the like proper this one the one oh no from south africa the one that i responded to ashim the thing that's eating in my life like a maggot is the fact that I responded to his fan mail. So now I don't respond anymore at all to fan mail. I don't respond to DMs anymore. I don't. Because I don't know. I am collecting dirt. I am collecting some obsessive people who feel entitled to me because I responded to fan mail. And they are now looking at me like the audacity. Getting a first come first save. Yo, Joe. has like it. Like, come on, Putting a napkin in their, um in their shirt, getting ready to eat because some cute chick online responded to his DM. That dude thoroughly had delusions of grandeur. He imagined himself one day near me, in my life, caressing me. He saw it, like he envisioned it. Just like it, but yeah. Like I said, when people out here plan and plot around Impiloyako that you would never look at like that. Kaze, who is safe? Who in the world is safe? Kima. Well, yes, like, y'all, anyway, these men got daughters, all right? They've got daughters. They've got sisters that they would not want to be subjected to the tyranny of whatever under heaven they are. And yet they are what it is that they are. They are spiritual terrorists and they scour the internet. Unfortunately, we are in the 21st century age of information where there's all th these gorgeous, wonderful, like, women all over, littered all over the internet, even men. This here is not gender specific. It, like, this is happening to men too where they're being stalked by some freaky women like strange little weird ominous obsessed whack chick all up in his hair like a tick and she will harass him because he was kind enough to respond to a direct message and feel like oh, wow, job. yo yo girl really to a point of investing in sorcery but this thing however is largely 
being practiced by men where women are concerned predatory salivating over women and men's daughters on the internet to the point of murder pornographic men do you understand what i'm saying they can do not they they are they they get a player in their waking lives they sleep around joe yes like it but as in i'm a christian woman man relaxing blomang these men last week they had sex just last week no not with their wives but with their mistresses and their wives some of them are hiv positive bashela they flirt in the oh guys like yo i'm waiting on god for a husband the rapture i believe the rapture is happening i don't even think that that's coming but should it come y'all need to comprehend that i am a consecrated woman with integrity dignified waiting on god for a husband i've been celibate for 13 years and i am being salivated after by i'm a daughter listen to this ne? who flirt with women in the office when they go to the mall bashala the chick that is scanning groceries at the pick and pay they are ever ogling at women in 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 in, in, pub, in public spaces where they're at they are beer drinking bry attending drunkards that at those bries and those beer drinking sessions at those bars of theirs uh every so often with a makwapeni even though he's got a wife at home in traffic when he's driving if there's a hot chick in the next car stopped at the robots he says he waves and tries to get her to park her car so he can take her number because he's always shallaring oh goodness gracious guys he is always shallaring even though in 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 umfazi this little dog has a wife but he's still like a high school dude playing the chicks in the school playground in the office he flirts with colleagues if at all a woman so much as winks and not winks but looks at him with any favor with kindness freshness on the face he's like hi how are you how are you doing yeah i'm i'm temba so what's your name and he's prepared to take a number and trust me he will call it and he will book into a hotel the next weekend with that woman if she is willing sleep with her and then never see her again men like that <laughs> y'all need to understand would see <laughs> what kind of insanity is pursuing men like that bang bona na, like any other little woman that they're flirting with in the office any other chick in, in in the mall that they think is cute that looks at them with a smile and then they shella with this woman being ignorant that he's married like men with that kind of rap sheet <laughs> i've been waiting on god for 13 years for a husband i've been celibate the whole time all i do is the work of the ministry all i do is gospel work and yet i am thoroughly being feasibly and apparently reasonably being ogled at and desired salivated after by men whose intention is to make me a mistress 13 years of celibacy because of religion and they somehow see it as a thing that is feasible to occur for me to one day end up in a hotel room with them and then when i make it clear that this is nonsense and rubbish on a rooftop because they're involved in the occult i care so not only are they these fraternizing freaks all over the show but jolan garde in high school they're also involved in occult magic they feel entitled some of them are wealthy they've got money because of their little mini snake rituals due to them already being part of the kinema darkness and seeing as it was already so easy for them to spill the blood of like some nieces and nephews they then imagine that i who is a bruiser of their egos i who is a burster of their deadbeat darkly bubble must also die they easily just la like lay waste human souls i am apparently allegedly fit and up for grabs for murder because i rejected some menacing freak who had sex two hours before he listened to my content on youtube no not with his wife but with some chick from the office that he's been trying to hit that with for a while and she finally capitulated i'm at the as elevating after me they are your dads they are the ceos of your companies they are general managers heading your teams they are they are everywhere and are crazy disrespectful and have no regard for boundaries and they are rapists because they use roofies and i am bombarded by all of their attacks and now i am being murdered i'm not being murdered okay the attempt is to achieve that i keep surviving death spells i've been surviving them for a whole decade but just the attempt at my life or to evidence to you guys at all who are listening to me with an a sober ear my audience is some of it very unfortunately diabolical but every so often there is a gem yana of a person that does not listen with rubbish ears they live among us they are everywhere and no one is safe from them but for christians they are laying waste women and those that don't capitulate to them can even end up in the grave because some pompous arrogant egocentric occult beast with no self-control who is a city without walls decided that no woman says no to me wangdella pinky wangdella lerato wangdella karab 
you are too little heck no over my dead body before any woman will reject me. And because of his exquisite lust and desire for you, he will then lure you into a corner and end you. He will make out of you Uwe Nen that you did not sign up for it. You're not in some strange deadbeat relationship with some Oki that, I mean, once he's killed you, everybody can see where that came from. You are a woman just fetching your laundry and you ended up in eternity. Like I said, some of them are dads of girls. They have daughters. They are busy spreading HIV all across South Africa and would not want any man to come into their daughters and do that to them. But hypocritically, they're prepared to do it in all of that, duplicitous, that, that duplicitousness. They're prepared to do it to other people's daughters. And so far as it's not his own child, except there's so many of them all over the show that it's inevitable that like a boomerang, one such beast will end up in the lives of their daughters. And on that day, he's going to feel all entitled to kill them because how dare you do that to my child. These men got girl children. And these men are also very unfortunately supported by women. That people lament at the police for killing because they were loved in the community for no other reason than the fact that they are like Pablo Escobar out here doing philanthropic works in the slums where he grew up, even though he is terrorizing those very slums and elsewhere. Some people love them because of the fact that they can be so generous. I get what I'll tell it. Their little philanthropic activities oftentimes precisely because they're trying very hard to absolve themselves from the guilt of all the blood they shed. But these men are raping women all across the country. South Africa, it is Hila. It's dirty. It is dirty. Like the country spiritually is so filthy. Y'all have no clue what's going on in the spirit realm. You have no idea. So my situation, as painful as it might be, as hard as my life might be, I am frankly the safest woman in the country right now. Precisely because I go nowhere. Precisely because I do nothing. Precisely because I'm not in a position to meet them in the office as my colleagues, as my bosses, as my superiors or my even subordinates. Thank God I don't meet them at the mall or just in public at some conference. Because all that it takes for them to decide that they're going to lure you in and later rape you then kill you is their attraction to you. So essentially, beautiful woman, it's over for you before it even starts. Everywhere you go, there are men who feel like I can take that. I want it. I want it. And if at all you say no, some of them will go to the extreme of killing you. I once listened to a testimony of some occult man. He was saved though in Christ. He spoke about how it is that whenever a woman would reject him, he would do a spell that would, con that would try convert her life upside down. He would put her upside down in a ritual and right way, uh, upside down and inside out so that everything of hers would fall apart. And on top of that, he did an aging spell on her. To make sure that when people look at her, when men look at her, all they see is an old woman. Even though as she's walking outside in the world, she looks young. She looks her age. But when people look at her, and so they just walk right past her. Purely because he pursued her and she said no. When a man makes a decision to utterly devastate your life like that, purely because you said no. What in the world are we living in? What, what kind of a, a planet is are we living in? It's a cesspool of darkness, you guys. And, and like I keep saying... Even these men who keep on killing my husband that I haven't met. You are wasting spells and you're wasting your souls going to eternity. Because we are not going to be getting married. This is done for. This world is over. The wickedness is so exquisite that it cannot be a going concern any longer. This can only result in the rapture, guys. Like, this is, it's not. Like, the evil is that. Like, I am telling you right, I've got a headache. I've got a bang Like, the, this headache is in back here. And it feels like somebody is literally slicing my head in half and it is as a result of a death ritual done by a fan of nokio as a 13 year old girl some fan some fan that is irritated severely with the fact that i am as no nonsense as i am i said no kind of man to take to turn a woman's life using an occult ritual upside down and inside out and then age her in a ritual so when men look at her they see nothing but iskokwan but he met me on the internet he didn't meet me. He found my content on the internet. He didn't officially meet me. Meeting is a uh, a, a mutually beneficial thing. It is an, a, 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 a process engaged, involved in by two parties. You meet. But when somebody finds your content, no, that's not a meeting. This random fool found my content and made a decision that my life is going to be upside down, inside out, and that I'm going to be iskogwani in the eyes of anybody that looks at me. Why? Because I am as no nonsense as I am. I will not respond. They use occult magic to utterly decimate. Nobody is safe except Christians. And all you lukewarm, fluffy, flaccid people that aren't really sincere with Jesus Christ, you can be taken by that tsunami. You can get taken by it. They are everywhere. They live among us. The guy in America, he felt so entitled to me that he wanted me to... Oh, listen, oh guys, whoa. Mm. 
he wanted me to apologize to him for rejecting him to apologize to celebrate after him you know what he hoped to cause my apology blocking me so severely that i would get no help from anybody being dry essentially a little desert land around me until i would miss the days of all of the thousands of rands that he would give me and then go back to him salivating kissing his toes saying baby i miss you and then apologize for what i don't know he did a ritual to try and achieve that all that his ritual achieved was drying up my donations drying up my my sus sustainability my assistance my help my support from people but actually get me to go back to him ew the lord allowed his little ritual to work to show him that you are arrogant occult practitioners you are pompous you are pompous to think that people will throw their dignity away and kiss your toes just to be given some kind of a semblance of a normal life just to have their corsets loosed their braziers loosed and letting them hang just for a person to be given leg room to move left and right nyan, that they would come back and, and say sorry to someone that they had to leave like you know when when umuntu has been a rubbish to you and you are holding fast to indabayoguti good riddance you've door slammed them you know how disgusted you feel at the prospect of them feeling entitled to an apology from you umuntu nyanyisil besa uzo funuguti uti sor because he's the only one that can give you a care yo guys that's like it man yes yeah, like it oh good like as in they they think that they can do that to people they have no respect for the fact that people have got their own faculties to think they 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 they, they have no respect for people have got their own sense of pride do you understand what i'm saying where it is that and now over my dead body before i will do certain things i would never allow myself to do certain things he's the one that cheated on me over my dead body they think that people they think that they can like so squeeze people in a tight corner that they can make them abandon all of their standards all of their thresholds whatever it is that is the, the, the least or the most that they can do they think they can cause people to abandon that essentially causing people to worship them at their feet salivating after them kissing their toes and everything they think they can get people there they have no idea just how much people hold fast to their sense of dignity in spite of sorrow in spite of lack in spite of want it's the kind of thing that can make a woman say no thanks i'm fine knowing that she is famished just so some person from the past that she had a falling out with does not know that she's struggling this person being prepared to give them 50 bucks to go and buy some bread and she will say no i'm good i'm set even though she needs to take public transportation home otherwise she'd have to walk like 20 kilometers she would rather walk 20 kilometers than let this person know that they're struggling people will hold fast to that way before they will ever just capitulate mind you when something is so heinous as you slapped me with bring back lost lover you were busy with me you messed up with all of my contacts on youtube you messed up with all of my contacts on facebook and so lawyer everything in my life and now that i am high and dry you i must come to you and apologize yes like it no hi there buddy i'd rather go hungry i'd rather get anorexic do you understand from a lack of sustainability lack of support like lack of maintenance then say sorry to especially you i'm not about to go and eat the vomit these people are like that they, they they have no respect for the fact that people have their own sense of restorative dignity they think people can just throw their dignity out the window because they did spells they think they can beleaguer they can squeeze people into such a tight corner that they will do what they want them to do and it is the it is entitlement especially over women like like for me it's about it's about my chastity my purity they fetishize it they just want to hit that hit that they're like the men of sodom i don't know how many times i can speak this the men of sodom bring her bring them out so we can have sex with them they're like that such filthy sordid men think that mina i will throw away 13 years of my chastity 13 years langkuta 13 years just throw it away because i'm not mad yo guys as in yes like it but i've been and only paul abandu they have no respect for anyone god baba fazin din you support them you support these menaces these gangsters they are thieves they keep killing daughters they lure women into certain spaces and rape them they keep roofing you but because they haven't come to your doorstep you support them you are standing with menaces with filthy gangsters and mina as a police officer belonging to the kingdom of police officers shooting them down to the ground neutralizing them taking them to eternity you out here looking at me like i'm the scum of the earth when i rid society of something that ought to have been gotten rid of okay you are just looking at god and the and the legions of heaven 
you are just looking at the kingdom of heaven like we stank because we we are finishing off that you've been supporting they are destroying south africa but just because they have not yet destroyed your backyard you're supporting them these rapist men are all over and the, the, the only reason why they've been given this bravado is operant conditioning, positive reinforcement. You have reinforced their behavior by approving them. You have loved them in their insanity. And so they just keep doing it. They have no incentive to do differently. And that's why they feel entitled even to me. But unfortunately, they are, they are terrorizers even of you. No woman in this country is safe because of Lamatota and their occult... Mamangata. Nina, I'm a slave queen. Letting them take your wombs, your futures. Taking away big before You are busy sleeping around with these men about twelve hard knock. And because they have destroyed Impilozeno, you are then coming at Bazalwan as if though we are not the solution to this problem in this country. As if though we are not the solution to the fact that Amatota Etu, Akwinya Inyonga, our men are busy swallowing snakes by a twala left, right, and center, just to gain respect and opulence, and you are loving them because when Mali, it's written in God's word that for the love of money. Is the root of all kinds of evil and many who have wandered after it have pierced themselves with many pains women in south africa you have pierced yourselves with many pains by loving money because you have loved ama daughter at well and now bang funa high and low to a point of ama death rituals bang and bafun baba get a ui nena unlike y'all who pass away at the hands of these men because nelly tralibon mina i'm passing away at their hands because they salivated after me by young and gun and they are trying to lure me into a laundromat and rape me they're trying to convert me into ui nene mina i'm a spice girl himself Thank God I'm born again. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm protected. I'm shielded from these rubbishes. But they are all over the show. And the only reason why they keep growing in number is because Nina Nyaba support. You support them. Even though Ban Tatala Ika Mbazenu Nonke, Ban Tatala Ika Mbazenu Nonke, Balengela Dibika Masoya Bana, they sleep with you and rob you of your womb. Next thing you are, you're trying to have a baby with your husband and you can't and you don't know why. You slept with one of them. Slay Queen Chiki. Or Obetala one of them. And now you're freaking infertile. They they just steal by tat and they yonkin to buy food anything anything and anything into lime cut going to buy food now buy tat anything they want in these streets they just take it because one about Satan and you think Guti Mina I'm your enemy ah uh, okay I'm like the police that shoots down a gangster that had to go but all of y'all go mami lord all of y'all go so wait to go so all all of y'all go Alex linkreta da barake le bolai it's a little uh, Robin Hood yen I killed your little Robin Hood your Robin Hood's gotta go they are menaces they're terrorists and the Lord God Almighty is going to neutralize them. All these headaches that I keep on getting, we're thinking it's for your benefit. Or to even report this information is for your benefit. And I don't care anymore if it's your big cousin or your boss or some beloved rando in the community that is a philanthropist on one side of the room, but on the other side, he is a terrorist, a murderer. A human sacrificer. Because they all died in drownings. Strange occurrences. Events. And he passed away from some mysterious illness. Because you, you don't do anything to eradicate them. You call yourselves a Christian country. The prayers of the wicked are an abomination to Emmanuel. That's what is written in God's word. They are like a stench up his nose. So if you're not really saved. And it's only peasants or rappers. You should take your tongues and you should take your I look what's next. You're not going to achieve anything at all. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and they are literally destroying the countries like a state capture. I keep on saying that. It's a hostile takeover. They have taken over South Africa, Yonke, and Nyabatanda, even though they're destructive. And so, Tina, Espan neutralize you that come from the kingdom of heaven. Like I said, Lord, we are here to help you along. But it's a thankless job because you out here giving grief to the popo that then neutralize a gangster that had to go. This is not going to result, unfortunately, in a national repentance. I told you, South Africa is going to cease to be a nation. It's not going to result in nations in the nation's repentance. It's going to result in the rapture. This world, this epidemic of this rubbish going on all over the... It's, it's global. What I'm trying to get at is that this problem is global. The gangrene has spread too far. The only thing that you can do right now at this present juncture is make sure, ascertain for yourself individually and uniquely that you are safe with Christ. So when the rapture happens, you get caught up. Because that's the only thing that can happen from this point going forward. How not anything else is hitting? They've already they've overrun the country. It's spread to vital organs. It is no longer salvageable. We are done, Lana. This is going to result in a rapture. Don't say I did not warn you. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Crank K. Peace.